Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Lauren Wetzler. I am the program manager at ATEC, which is a program of Goodwill of Orange County. Um, I'm just going to briefly talk about our services and then more specifically our reuse services and then talk a little bit about um, collaboration and how that's really benefited our program, um, especially regarding reuse. So as I mentioned, we are a program of Goodwill of Orange County. Um, our services include assistive technology assessment, training, professional development, and we do loan and reuse as well. Our reuse services include um, an assortment of various AT equipment from low vision, communication devices, um, and so forth. Typically they're older equipment, but they still are functional and still work. Um, we also do have some durable medical equipment that are typically donated to us, so walkers, some wheelchairs, um, and other items. And then we also have accessible telephones and accessories, and that's through our partnership with the California Telephone Access Program, where they are able to provide us with either out of catalog or devices um, and telephones that um, they no longer have available, but they do have some, so they send them to us, and we have um, either our staff or volunteers who will clean up the phones and accessories and make sure they're good to go and we get those back out to the community for free. And all of our equipment that we have available through reuse is either free or low cost. Um, we do also accept donations, except for larger durable medical equipment, um, just mostly due to storage. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. But we do have this service, and um, like I said, anyone can um, access this. So I'm going to go to our next slide. And this is on collaboration. And you know, as many of you know, um, collaboration is an asset to increase access to assistive technology, um, especially when it comes to education and awareness. And this particularly um, works especially regarding reuse. Um, and so I'm going to share a little bit of our current activities or networks that we have and how it's really benefited um, our reuse program. So our first is we facilitate a couple local AT collaborative groups. Um, we have one here. We're in Orange County, so we have an Orange County uh, collaborative group. And then we have a Los Angeles collaborative group. And these all include stakeholders um, and different um, people from local school districts, SELPAs, Department of Rehab, Independent Living Centers, California Children's Services, One Stops, other nonprofit organizations, and anyone else, and regional centers, and anyone else who um, provides services or equipment for assistive technology. Um, so really what it is, it's a chance for our partners to meet. We usually meet quarterly, and we discuss different issues, concerns, um, maybe trends. Um, we also often look at policy and procedures from different groups to kind of understand how is their provision of assistive technology services, what are their qualifications and funding. Um, but this is a great platform for us um, to talk about reuse, um, especially over the past couple of years. I know our Orange County group, we actually, um, you know, both groups have mission statements and goals and objectives, and our Orange County group actually has an objective regarding reuse, um, enhancing awareness, um, because it's a, a service that a lot of people aren't aware of. Um, a success story that I kind of wanted to share was um, in our LIAT collaborative group, I was sharing about reuse and um, the coalition. and and one of the local school districts was really um, excited about it because she knew of some students who really were in need of some durable medical equipment and was able to get in contact with one of the reuse centers and be able to provide that to that student. So that was a really great um, outcome. And she had no idea about it um, prior to um, going to our group. Um, Another one is just really partnering with your local independent living center. If you are an independent living center, um, you know, maybe it's partnering with other um, AT groups or AT programs out there. I know that we here in Orange County really benefit from um, our local ILC, which is Dale McIntosh Center. And I know Ricardo is here today, so um, a big yay for him. Um, just really being a really great um, partner. Um, we do a lot of cross referrals. Um, 
sharing of resources, and um, the Dale McIntosh Center also does an Orange County Reuse Day, which we participate in, and so it really is a good partnership because they have a larger capacity for more durable medical equipment, so often we don't have a lot of the requests that come in um, regarding that, so I know I could always go to Ricardo and vice versa, and so it's been a really great partnership for us, especially locally here in Orange County. Um, so just really looking and soliciting your local, um, you know, either ILCs or AT centers to partner up and see how you can meet that need in your community. Um, and I think that's it for this, but if you have any other questions later on the presentation, um, please let me know, and um, I will pass it over to, I think it's Jorge is next. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Jorge, and I am the uh, System Technology Advocate at Central Call Center for Independent Living in Salinas. So if, if any of you, there's, I know there's a lot of advocates on the call, so if there might be some information that's very repetitive, but it's okay. Uh, so here at CISO, we do not have a reuse program. However, as an advocate, collaborating with other agencies that do reuse has been very beneficial to our consumers. Um, as the assistive technology advocate, my duties are to provide service coordination, which means to do as much as possible to get my consumers the AT that they need, uh, public education and outreach, that is presentation on assistive technology, you know, any information about the AT network. Uh, this is probably the biggest way to collaborate with other agencies doing presentations. And the last one, it's information referral. Sometimes consumers just want to know where they can get what they need without formally being served as a consumer. Um, as an advocate, our duties are to assist consumers that need assistive technology in more than one county. I know, for example, I cover three counties. That's Monterey, Santa Cruz, and San Benito County. Um, other advocates might cover more counties than I do. And that is a lot of room for collaboration, as sometimes assistance is limited to specific territories or age groups. Uh, I've worked with, on a, with this organization that only assisted uh, people within their city, and I had to work another, with another organization that only assists consumers over 55, so it was more a, of a reuse program for, for, for seniors. Um, and my duties are to assist with direct services to about 50 consumers or more. It really depends on each independent living center, so it's more, more people. I average about 50. And working with more, collaborating with as many agents as possible increases the odds in finding what my consumers might need. <laughs> so my biggest requests are, you know, DME repairs. Uh, people have questions about DME vendors, medical, medical information, and donations. So the DME repairs, I get many consumers who call about repairs. Uh, the first thing that I try to find out is how did they acquire the AT that they got in the first place? If the insurers pay for the device, so we try to find out who the vendor is and we try to work with them. If the consumer has no insurance or money, then I try to find a free DME from those organizations that do reuse uh, DME vendors and Medical Medicare. I also get many consumers who just need a referral to a vendor or want to know what medical, what Medical and Medicare cover. Depending on their coverage, I make them aware of their options or once again, I try to get them uh, free equipment. For example, I had a consumer who was only covered by Medicare and she wanted a scooter and a walker. Uh, Medicare was not going to pay for both of them, and then she, when she did get one of those equipment, she was going to be responsible for 20% of the cost, so she ended up getting a reused scooter and a brand new walker from a program, so she got both and it didn't cost her much. And the last one is donations. Uh, well, since our organization, Cecil, we've been around for almost 30 years, we get many calls for donations. Since we don't have a reuse program, I refer them to the appropriate agency that may take their equipment. Um, it is very beneficial for advocates to learn what resources are available in the process to acquire equipment. Um, as an advocate, it has been very important to know the process of how these organizations work. Often there is a referral process and there's a lot of documents that need to be submitted before someone gets approved for the equipment that they need. And sometimes organizations Hi, this is on a daily basis or give out equipment on specific days. And also a lot of organizations are really dependent on volunteers. So it's uh, as an advocate, it's good to know all those logistics so that when somebody needs assistance, you can help them um, as soon as possible. 
And at the end, collaborate, collaborating with other agencies can also lead to referrals for other services within the agency. A lot of our independent living centers offer other services, whether it's housing services, work incentives, or referrals to other organizations that a consumer might benefit for. Um, and what I see is the future of collaboration. Uh, working with a lot of organizations, I think we, if, if a lot of the reuse centers can work with a partnership with Medi-Cal, for example, other states have worked with Medi-Cal to refurbish used equipment, costing um, same, I mean, saving states money, taxpayer money, that would be a very good thing. And if we have a bigger collaboration, we can those networks to able to increase the odds of everyone getting the equipment that they might need. And that gets the rest of oh yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Now it will be Deborah's turn. Hi everybody. My name is Deborah with Independent Living Services of Northern California. We have two offices, one in Chico and one in Reading, and I'm located in the Reading office. Our agency our agency, we provide advocacy, peer advising. We have a vision resource center. I do the assistive technology and reuse. We have a housing specialist and information referral. I'm going to talk about the reuse and where we acquire the durable medical equipment. The majority of our equipment is donated through private parties in the area. I get equipment from residential homes, nursing homes, senior centers, assisted living centers, a recycling center here in Reading, which is called Restoration Enterprises, and also Craigslist. I use Craigslist occasionally if someone is looking for a specific item that I don't have. And if it is on Craigslist, I will usually send them a letter asking if they would donate it to our agency. Where do we get our consumers to get the durable medical equipment back out to the community? I've done a lot of work in our community um, with local agencies. The Golden Umbrella, which is our senior center, in-home support services, Mercy and Home Support Services, United Way, the Good News Rescue Mission, which is our homeless mission, social services, I get a lot of phone calls from. Um, I am able to participate in our veteran stand down, which is a three day event um, yearly where I actually take medic durable medical equipment with me there and, and give out. We have the Continuum of Care Council, which is, um, deals with homelessness in the area. And it's a great networking because most agencies from Shasta County attend. Um, I get a lot of calls from discharge planning from local hospitals, rehabilitation centers, and the nursing homes. I've been working with the Veterans Resource Center and they assist veterans who are homeless. And what's wonderful is they're in the same parking. They, their building is right next to ours. I get a lot of calls from Adult Protective Services. I do a large event, which is Project Homeless Connect. And I bring durable medical equipment with me to that event. And I'm able to um, distribute it there. Uh, Craigslist, and I just started a new partnership with the Reading Veterans Home, which just opened two months ago. And what I have found is I've been working with Pam, who does our Vision Resource Center. She serves people who are 55 and over who are losing their vision. And so being able to partner with her, she's going into the home and seeing what consumers need. And so it has been a great partnership because she's right there and we can get connected with the needs of the consumers very quickly. Um, some challenges of the durable medical equipment, the reuse program that I'm sure everybody has is storage. We have a very small office, so we have a storage unit uh, about a block away. It's not very large, but 
it does work. And I spend a lot of time going back and forth from the office to the storage unit to get items when people walk in. I always try to make appointments because then I can collect all of the durable medical equipment at one time and not have to run back and forth. But sometimes you, you aren't in control of that. Another challenge is cleaning and repair of equipment. Um, I'm very picky now of what type of durable medical equipment that I accept because of space and if it's not in good repair, you know, in, in then I usually do not take it and I'm able to recycle it with a different agency called Restoration Enterprises. Um, also, I'm not an expert on how to repair items. Um, it's kind of hit and miss. I do get a lot of power wheel chairs in. So to learn how to change the batteries, put new batteries in, it's taking some time because every chair is different. Um, another challenge that I have is the actual, my physical ability to load and unload equipment. Our agency is very lucky because we do have a van that we were able to acquire through a grant. And so I am able to go pick up and deliver equipment if needed. A lot of times I do get calls for people who have, don't want to donate, let's say, a hospital bed. I can't physically take a hospital bed because it entails going into the home, taking it down, loading it in the car, and then trying to fit it in storage. And I just can't do that. So what I try to do when that happens is I get the name and number of the person who has the hospital bed. And I start a list of people who need a hospital bed, and then I kind of make the connection there. Another, I don't know if it would be a challenge, but there's, I have received an increase in demand of durable medical equipment. And a lot of times I'm running out of items, such as manual wheelchairs and walkers. Um, I always end up with a lot of commodes and shower chairs but it's the manual wheelchairs and walkers that are in high demand. And so it, it, it puts a stress on your calendar <laughs> because there's so many people that you're seeing. For instance, the month of February, I had over 20 new consumers for durable medical equipment. Another um, challenge that I have is um, the amount of time, going back to the amount of time that I'm spending on reuse. Um, I would say my day is 90% for reuse because people are calling, I'm doing referrals, I'm checking the inventory, people are walking in. So it is very time consuming. Another aspect is testing the equipment which goes back up to the cleaning and repair. Um, a lot of equipment, sometimes it's dropped off a car load of equipment, which I actually have a pile sitting in our um, conference room. And there's a lot of items that I need to go through and see if they work or not. And also it comes down to a lot of times I have to get rid of items because we don't have the money to be able to make the repairs. Um, ILSNC, is a, the biggest challenge is that we serve eight counties. We serve Shasta, Modoc, Lassen, Siskiyou, Butte, Tehama, Glen, and Plumas. And that's almost all of Northern California. And so to go pick up equipment or deliver equipment, a power chair, I may be on the road for an hour and a half to two hours to three hours to deliver that one device. We have a very large service area. Um, I'm trying to think. I think oh, that's all I wanted to discuss. If anyone has any questions, please ask. Thank you so much, uh, Jorge, Deborah, and uh, Lauren, for sharing some of your experiences with uh, collaborating with other organizations um, for reuse. Um, I did want to ask Jorge, what were some of the organizations you've worked with in terms of uh, getting you know, reuse DME for your consumers? Um, one that I worked with was at our Milpitas. That was, that's the here in San Jose. That was the Able People Foundation. I got equipment, and they have it different ways. Um, I got a few equipment for consumers that 
a customer needed a scooter and a customer needed a, a power chair. And that was through the regular process where you download their application and then you submit it um, as an advocate or a letter of support stating that my consumer needed a wheelchair and they also need a proof of, um, of, of an ID. And the customer went and she picked up the equipment. And then they also have something called the gift of mobility and they do that once a year. So I had a customer that also went there in that time. So that was the Able People Foundation. And the other organization that worked here locally in Salinas, that was the Episcopal Senior Communities. So it's a church, it's a network of churches, and they got um, a grant to do reuse, or they inherited a program. But they have a lot of equipment, and they tend to help only seniors over and anyone who's over 55. So those are a couple of the organizations that I collaborated with. Great. Joe, you have a question? I do. Actually, I have a comment about the Able People Foundation. Just they're in my backyard, and I saw them the other day, and just things aren't going very well So, if, for their organization as far as funding goes. So if there's something that um, you know, you're in a hurry for, um, I would kind of get on the ball because I don't know how much longer they're going to be around. Mm, okay, thanks for sharing that, Joe. Um, Eddie? Okay, I think he's writing a comment. Um, in the meantime, does anyone else have a question? Why Eddie writes his comment down? Does anyone else want to comment about what organizations you worked with, that you successfully worked with in getting reuse and um, doing reuse drives and things like that, or just getting equipped? Hi, it's Jorge. Well, I kind of have a comment. Um, cause I had a consumer that came in, or I've been talking to for the last month. Um, she has an older chair, it's an Everest and Jenny uh, wheelchair, and that's the type of wheelchair that she likes. And I think I don't. And they were trying to get a new one, and she was working with a vendor, and the vendor only, I think, only had had some specific best until they only had like Quickie and when they went out to do the evaluation that we were sure really that they wanted to give her, they didn't meet her needs and then the vendor just pretty much walked out of her house and said, Okay, well that's the end of it, you don't like this one, um that's all I have to offer. So with reuse, I know some organizations take older equipment, so that would be uh, what I'm gonna start looking for is to see who has an older wheelchair that she can benefit from. Great, thank you so much. Um, does anyone have any questions about like how they the three oh sorry, here's Eddie's question. Jorge, what's the name of the center in Eupetus? Oh, I think it's called Able People Foundation. That is that the is that does that answer your question, Eddie? Okay, great. Thank you. Um so I, I wanted to know like for the organizations that are on this call now, or on the call and also on the, online, can you tell me what organizations do you guys have found? Do you guys collaborate with organizations? What are some, what are some of the challenges um, that you guys have encountered trying to collaborate with organi other organizations? Maybe the three panelists can help give possible ideas. This is Sandy calling. I'm talking here. Um, I am a volunteer at the Lutheran Church of the Resurrection up here in Northern California. And, um, it's in Granite Bay near Roseville. <coughs> and very informally, um, we're right now in the process of starting up a whole health care ministry pro program. But one of the things of particular interest to me um, is that I myself have ended up with an attic full of durable medical equipment, not knowing what to do with it, and it brought to my idea, and what we've been doing is very informally creating a web page um, just on an Excel spreadsheet of lending out equipment that people um, may need and just to log it out who it belongs to, who it's going to. And it's been very effective so far. If we find out someone's having a hip replacement, we're able to immediately contact them and say, we have this, 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 and this available if you might need it after your replacement. And if it's the proper size and fit for you, um, you're welcome to borrow it. And just that we keep track of who has it and who it gets returned, returned to. And I, I was wondering if anybody has any comments on this type of a program. 
Hi, this is Steve Fryer in San Mateo. Can you hear me? Hi, Steve. I grew up in San Mateo. How are you? Oh, great. And you're in Roseville? Um, yeah, at Granite Bay is where our church is located. Oh, okay. I'm currently in Folsom, actually. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah we cover the whole Rose area, basically. What you, actually, what you actually have is a loan closet. In essence, but without a physical closet, because we don't have the space for storage to actually collect everything. So we have everybody go ahead and hang on to what you have, and mm -hmm. most likely we will be finding somebody who will be needing that and that can borrow it from you. And that should you need it back at any point in time, you have access to get it back. Well, um, in a way, uh, we don't have a loan closet, but we we have a you know reuse program here. It's two years old. It it sounds like the same same situation I just heard a few minutes ago, where it's kind of taken over um, my job. So uh, what we're trying to do, <laughs> we're going to be moving, I think, but. Um, first order of the day is to find a place to store stuff. I think that's critical, uh, almost like a goodwill where people can drive by, drop off, or whatever. Right. Uh, we don't we don't call our program a loan at all. We don't like to loan anything. We like to just give it out. Okay. And with that, I make everybody sign a waiver. Okay. So that they know that they're responsible for it and that they own it. I tell them they own it. And that solves a lot of problems as far as storage because it keeps things flowing. <clears throat> so what will happen after a while, you'll get so much stuff otherwise that uh, you'll say, well, what do I do with all this? So I think it's better to keep it flowing as much as possible. Uh, just, you know, and, and you have to do triage as well uh, right. when you take donations. Just take the really good stuff. If you have the space to take stuff that's not as good, what I do with that is I kind of sequester it and put it aside, and then uh, maybe once a quarter, once a year, whatever makes sense, uh, I call a scrap hauler, or if you have the wherewithal, take uh -huh. it to a metal dealer, and you can get some money for that. Okay. Um, is the waiver signed by the donor or by the recipient? Doesn't matter. Whoever picks okay. it up should sign it because they're really okay. taking charge of it. So you know, um, I got mine <clears throat> from the Able People Foundation originally, and I just modified it. So uh, you can always change it. Um, once in a while, I do loan something out if it's something that's kind of unusual. So then just have a, make them sign a waiver for that too, because <clears throat> the reason when we got into this, we took over kind of from a loan closet that was in a church nearby in Burlingame. And oddly enough, the day we started, the week before that. Uh, they were about to, in, uh, I guess, fight off a lawsuit, a potential lawsuit from some old lady who didn't like her wheelchair or whatever. I don't know what happened, but they got out of it instantly, and we got into it, so we got all the referrals. That's <laughs> so a good we didn't have to do any marketing. <laughs> yeah, and that's but, one of my concerns is liability. Um, if yeah. something should break, should something um, not be in, you know, in safe repair, where we you know, I, you know, I did, I have a background in case management and whatnot, but of course we would order wheelchairs and and whatnot. We didn't actually do the delivery and inspection. And I'm wondering, should we have some sort of um, an attorney drafted waiver of liability for safety and well, um, repair and things like that? I don't I don't think you need to go that far. I think uh, among the network here, there's probably enough waivers around that are that are pretty good. And that being said, uh, the original people who uh, taught us all this, they said in all the years they've been doing this, they've only seen, uh, I think, maybe one one real lawsuit or something like that. So, you know, but it's incumbent upon you to make sure that when you give something out that it's in good shape and it's not just a piece of junk, as you know. Right. Okay. And Steve, what kind of an organization did you go to to get you set up? And to give you your information. Well, we went through the AT network. Uh, you know, okay. Originally, two years ago, we got a grant, and we, with that, we bought a, a accessible vehicle, like they have up in Reading, and uh, it's actually a ramp van, so I can go and pick up uh, electric wheelchairs and deliver them if needs be. Right now, I have I think four right here in the office and two in my garage. That. Wow, that's uh, they're you know ready to go, and usually I do replace the batteries if if they're uh, if they're not like really tip top shape. Right. Um, you'll learn how to do that, and uh, it's not that hard. But uh, like someone said, I think Lauren or whatever it said, it was uh, some of them are more difficult. 
Yeah, because we well. wanted to get we wanted to have a small start and not jump in over our heads and and kind of see how it goes and um, you know what are our best first steps to to get this going. And right. you're saying a physical location is right. essential. I think you need that. We we happen to have a fourth floor location here uh, along El Camino and and uh, 16th Avenue, and uh, tend to use that for cleaning and storage. It's outside, but it doesn't rain very much in California anymore. So <laughs> when it does, it's considered a cleaning. So um, just kidding. But um, we if we do move, we probably will have to uh, get a space. And what I'm going to do is. Uh, able people, I think they got their space donated by uh, a large, uh, uh, wealthy uh, warehouse guy. I forget his name right now, but uh, uh, when I saw their space, I didn't see it physically, but uh, they have a lot of space. So I'm going to go to the same guy and make a grant proposal to um, to get, you know, like a tax write-off or whatever on their part, so we can have uh, a larger space that's got. Uh, wet space for cleaning and electric, so we can work on, on electric wheelchair and things like that. That'll be my next my next goal. Um, also, I got the name of somebody at Kaiser Foundation to write a grant, and we're also going to try to write grants to um, Sutter Health, which is uh, in Burlingame here, and uh, Kaiser. And let's see, I think there's Sequoia and Redwood City. Okay, all we have all of those up here, of course, as well. All, all, all of those most... hospitals. Those right. discharge planners that you talk to, they're all sending you people their way, your way. Okay, right. what are they doing for you? And so I'm going to turn it around and say, okay, we're trying to do this to help the people that fall between the cracks, and you're sending them us, us your way, our way. So why couldn't you help us with a little grant so we can hire somebody even part time and Sorry. Or rent a space? I didn't get it was just a suggestion. It was just a suggestion. I can't remember the woman's name who's on the phone right now or talking right now, but I was just going to avail our um, waiver that we have. Um, we have somebody sign one who donates it, but we also have one who signs one who takes any equipment that they get from here to absolve us of any responsibility in case something happens to them. They can't turn around and sue us. But like I said, I have a copy right. if you'd like that. You can send me an email. Um, Yes, I would love it. And if I can give you my email you address really quickly, it's Sandy S A N D Y, F as in Frank, zero eight zero six at gmail dot com. Maybe after the call, um, somebody from AT Network could could share those, and, and I'd be willing to uh, share ours as well. I would really appreciate that um, very much. Fred, was it Joe? Sandy, that was one more time. Sandy F. Zero eight zero. Correct. Sandy F as in Frank. Zero eight zero at Gmail. Okay. Zero eight zero six at Gmail. Okay, we'll do. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the information, and this is a really good uh, a good starting point for me to. To bring to the group and and look at where we go from here. Thanks, Sandy. Oh. We do actually have some members who are um, fairly well off and own large companies, and I know there's a lot of empty office space that is out in this area that um, we might be able to get donated to us. So, anyway. yeah. Uh, once once you get into the flow of it and you start you know uh, talking around town and whatnot, people will find you. It's essential to have a web page. I think that uh, we a lot of people are finding us now in San Mateo through the web page, and uh, we don't really promote it or anything. Uh, I haven't wanted to because I know we'd be overwhelmed because I'm already overwhelmed. So I want to find a, a, a bigger space before we really do some serious marketing. But that being said, uh, in, in last December we got a donation of uh, an accessible wheelchair van. Which I was able to clean up and turn around, and we sold it for almost twenty thousand dollars. So there is wow. money to be made here. Uh, not that you know we need the money, but of course we need the money. To reinvest it, of uh, course, and yeah, other but, projects. Uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I try to uh, refurbish the power wheelchairs. They seem to have the most value. We sell those anywhere between say two fifty and three and five hundred dollars. 
if I find someone who's really in need, then they may get a gift. So, uh, but generally, I'll put them on Craigslist and try to get it out there. There's a lot of people looking for stuff on Craigslist, so that seems to be the best way to to uh, market and and find people and and find equipment as well and get rid of it. Hospital right. beds, right. same thing. We don't take them. We just we log where they are, try to get a photo, get a model number. When someone calls looking for one, I just connect them up, and that's it. So. Uh, that's the best way to handle big stuff like that. Thanks. Lauren, Great you service. Have Great job. Thank you again. Hi, yes, this is Lauren from <laughs> ATAC. I just um, I put in the message chat box that another good resource just um, on what uh, Sandy was saying earlier is the Pass It On Center, which is a national um, organization, AT Reese Center, but they have this thing called a knowledge base. And there's a lot of really good resources right. in there, including things about liability, um, you know, um, how to sanitize, and all sorts of things regarding that. And it's just another resource for you to look into, especially if you're just kind of starting out and want to kind of see, without trying to reinvent the wheel, what might be already out there. So I just want to share that. That's exactly what I want. Thank you. I wrote that down and made note of it. Unfortunately, I hope next time I'll be able to get in online so I can see, you know, if there's any um, any kinds of uh, um, uh, projections or. Um, Oh, I have a mental block here anyway. Not enough coffee this morning. <laughs> anyway, you all have been very, very helpful, and thank you for for all of your information. Um, I will certainly look into it and. I'm sure it will give Great. us a good job. Great, you're finding it helpful. Great, good luck. Sandra, Sandra go ahead. Sandra um, I just wanted to um, uh, offer just a couple other comments. Um, recently, we've partnered with uh, one of our local Lions clubs, who uh, occasionally, every you know, maybe once every quarter, does a donation drive of um, maybe canned goods as well as eyeglasses. And uh, they've been gener generous enough to partner with us to also be asking for durable medical equipment. So, um, so they organize these donations drives and we're able to be the recipient of any DME that they bring in that um, you know would qualify for what we're looking for. And then also the Rotary Clubs are also um, a good resource to tap into for um, you know looking into partnering to get donations of durable medical equipment. Um, and then as far as storage, I know storage is an issue for us as well. We have a very small storage unit um, that stores things that we collect from the six different counties that we cover. And one of the things that we've been very lucky to have is a very good partnership with one of our vendors who does uh, ramps and vehicle modifications. And um, they've been able to um, store like used porch lifts, stair lifts for us because typically we'll have them be the installers um, to be able to install. We don't really have a lot of resources for, for those kinds of vendors in this area. So maybe partnering with the vendor for some of those larger types of pieces of equipment um, you know, may be beneficial to so you're not having to worry about, well, we've got this stair lift somebody wants to donate, but we don't have a place to keep it. So um, we, we, we utilize our vendor relationships to, um, because in that way, you know, they know that they're going to have continued business uh, coming through us and well as our consumers we refer, and then so they're able to, you know, kind of do us some favors in, in return. Yeah, that's very helpful to know that you guys are doing that. You know, actually, another thing I wanted to ask all of you is, I know one of the biggest challenge is, um, you know, picking up and delivery. Delivery. I know ILSNC and you know um, CID have vehicles, have modified vehicles to pick them up. But you know, we've been at the 18. We're, we're thinking of like maybe what's a good partnership to develop is with the food bank. You know, because they have these big delivery trucks. Um, that you know goes from places to places, and oftentimes you know, like for example, one center, my reuse program may have a lot of power wheelchairs or walkers. But how do in another center, you know, but some consumer might who needs it might be living in like Southern California. So what's a good suggestion as to like you know a possible collaboration in the future is how do we transport DME all around you know California? Um, does anyone have any ideas or suggestions, like good partnerships to maybe think about in terms of picking up 
DME for you um, or dropping it off to consumers who need them, but you, you know, if some centers don't have vehicles, they're not able to do that. Does anyone have any thoughts about that? Because that would be a great, you know, future project to do, not for you guys, but just for reuse in general. I'm wondering just even to hit up Hertz and um, um, the different Penske and the different uh, van rental companies that people will use for moving and storage that have those types of ramps. They may be willing to use that as um, um, you know a write-off and, and a nice uh, donation on their part. Ah, that's actually interesting. I know I volunteer for an organization called Wheels for the World, and what they do is they work with like big shipping companies like FedEx and other companies, and they help transport certain devices. So basically, the local member who picks up the device using their, they're all volunteers, they pick up the equipment right from the person's house when they want to donate it, um, and then from there they take it to this big old um, truck in a, someone's property, someone's kind enough to, you know, loan out their property, they have this huge shipping truck, and then like these volunteers would load it up, you know, once a month until the truck is full, and then they, they ship it off, right? But, I mean, you know, we've been working with other nonprofit organizations, which is very important, but also maybe thinking about working with the private companies, um, such as shipping trucks and companies like that. Right. That may benefit. You know, I know some exactly. of you have smaller reuse programs, but right. But it's something to think about. And if you guys know a future good partnerships to work with, you know, we'll love to hear more about them. So then maybe you know, as part of our effort, we can try to develop some system where everyone can transport different devices around <laughs> because it's very important, you know. Um, but what we do now is we have these in-person, 18 Network has these in-person meetings and what we're trying to do is, you know, have people, maybe when they come to these meetings, if they have a device and they know another AT advocate who, you know, needs a uh, so-and-so device for some consumer, we try to, like, facilitate that process by bringing that, you know, chair to those meetings and maybe exchanging it through that way. And so it's some good good ideas to share amongst you guys to in ways to collaborate um, with, you know, sharing uh, t different DMEs and transporting them around. Um, and I know we have like uh, five minutes left um, before we have to go, but I wanted to also talk about a, a few quick things about the Keep the Wheels Rolling Repair Fund. I know some of you guys have heard it through, you know, the the emails and through the listers and things like that, but uh, I just wanted to let, for those who are still new to the group, we have something called the Keep the Wheels Rolling Repair Fund where we pay for uh, repairs up to, well, it used to be up to $300. We might be changing it. It's not official yet, but I will send out an email uh, sometime either this week or next week announcing it. But um, um, as a potential way of, you know, when you get a donate equipment, oftentimes it's broken, you just need a battery. Uh, to repair it, so we're trying to help support the reuse programs by paying these batteries, paying for these batteries so that the power wheelchair would start working again. And so I encourage you guys all to apply. I know some of the organizations have already applied, um, and you don't have to, you know, be a big reuse program to do it as long as you have a, a nonprofit status. And the repairs for these chairs are not for new, cons are not for existing consumers, meaning only if you get it donated to you and you're fixing it, and you give it out to a new consumer. So I don't, I'm not sure if everyone's heard about it yet. So I'm just making sure that you know about this great program. Um, and another last thing I want to talk about is the reuse drive. So uh, April 22nd is Earth Day, and the AT Network is planning to support other reuse programs throughout the state of California. Um, and who, whoever is just doing any kind of reuse, you don't have to be, you know, have to have a nonprofit status. Um, and so, for example, what we're going to do is help you with marketing, because we're actually trying to work with the Reuse Alliance. That's the um, reuse of in California, does all sorts of reuse, not just DME. But this focus, we will do um, DME mostly. 
but we're going to have reuse lines. Maybe they, they're really interested in supporting our effort in doing this DME reuse drive. So you, we want to work for your organization. So it could be a week, it could be a day, it could be half a day. I know some of you guys don't have space to do it. So maybe some suggestions is to figure out like maybe another partnering local independent living center that might have space just um, as a way to help people know about, learn more about reuse. DME and especially April, you know, Earth Day is a good time for people to be aware of it. Some of the organizations have this, you know, um, have been interested in participating, and so we're going to be sending out a couple of emails about that as well. But you know, we'll be helping you. With, we're going to give you a poster. We'll give you a lot of different materials and um, PSA announcements, so you can make a local announcement to your radio station in your area and just different things like that. Um, I might be calling some of you directly just to ask if you guys would be interested in, in it. Maybe, you know, it could be for a couple hours. It could be just, you know, however much of time you are able to do it. But we want to make sure you guys are all getting, you know, these reuse equipment so that you can help out your consumers. Um, so does anyone have any questions for me before? Or any questions for the panelists? Or about the repair fund? Earth Day. And so if there are no questions, I just want to say thank you so much for coming to today's webinar. Um, next one is going to be sometime in May, uh, and it's going to be about policy and procedures. And Steve Fire is going to be one of our panelists, and as you know, he has a lot of good uh, knowledge about that. And so um, I just look forward to um, you know having this presentation in the next, I think, in May. So I, if We'll be sending out an announcement for it as well, for the exact time, link, and other information. So I just want to say thank you so much, everyone, for coming. I hope you found it useful and really appreciate your time. Have a good rest of the uh, morning. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye.